Welcome to TGIF and a Happy New Year! Happy New Year? Yeah. We just had Thanksgiving. We're going into Christmas. Isn't the New Year after that? Well, the normal New Year that we all know, but the Christian New Year, mm -hmm. actually the ancient people thought, you know, and lived into a new year starting at the end of November-ish, but it's leading into that first Sunday of Advent. So mm. the last Sunday we had Christ as King. And so we celebrate Christ as King and that's the end of the Christian year. Okay. And so the new year starts that first Sunday of Advent. And in the rich tradi traditions of Christianity, it was a time when we would they would set aside in getting prepared. So there was prayer time, there was reflecting on the what the new year was going to look like, but also that hope of what God would do this new year. And so although we have a few weeks till we celebrate the new year, the tri traditional Christian new year starts at the first Sunday of Advent. Exciting! Well, I, how many of you knew that? That's really exciting. And so as we go into this first Sunday of Advent, we are going to spend our TGIFs looking at the Advent. So. That takes us to our word of the day, which is hope. Got plenty of hope this Christmas season? Yes, there's lots of hope this season, but I like the hope, the direction we're going with hope and what that looks like. Yeah, so our scripture today, and when you go to scripture, I mean, the Bible is hope, isn't it? I mean, really, yeah. you open it from Genesis to Revelation, and it's all hope because it's hopefulness of what God is doing in the world and how Jesus Christ come into that story and builds it for us today. So looking in the Old Testament, it's like, oh, which one do we use for hope? But I chose today Jeremiah 23, verses five and six. For a time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom he will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. That's just a, a hopefulness, especially if you realize where Jeremiah and who Jeremiah is talking to. Because Jeremiah has really come down hard on the leadership around uh, Israel and this idea that the sheep are being led by these shepherds that are not very good shepherds. And so Jeremiah is trying to remind the people, you know, these people are going to pay a price. You know, woe to these shepherds who are leading you astray, not leading you the right way. But there's hope coming. There is hope for you. And this hope is coming in a descendant of David. That would have got their attention. You think? <gasps> a descendant of David? Yeah. Wow. But what they didn't know is how long they'd have to wait and not even realize that that wouldn't happen in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. But this idea of building a deep sense of hope. And I think that's what we need going Christmas season because we don't know if Jesus is going to return in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. But where can we build hope into everything we do? And especially this Advent Christmas season, it's, it's about spending time in this season and preparing. So, you know, the hope part of it is, is instrumental in, you know, really foundationally mm -hmm. positioning us for a, a blessed Christmas season. And hope, also the word expectation is part of that. I think when you think of what are you hopeful for, mm -hmm. you have to be thinking, what am I expecting? And that creates the excitement because I can be hopeful about something, mm -hmm. but if I'm expecting, then I think it just creates the energy behind it. And, and that expectation, this could very likely happen tomorrow. True. Jesus could come back tomorrow. <laughs> well, I guess he could finish this day off and come back today. I'm not going to We might put, not even say goodbye Yeah, today. I'm not, I'm not going to put God in a box about when he's going to do right. it. We don't know that time and day, but that expectation is like, yeah. oh, wow. But in the middle of Christmas season, uh, you right. know, we get a little bogged down in the places we have to be, the presents we have to buy, the, you know, all of the drama mm -hmm. that goes with it. <laughs> drama at Christmas, that's a whole different TGIF, I guess. But that is so true. Family is important at Christmas and the gifts and the kids around the Christmas tree, so excited to open gifts, that is all fine. Yeah. But is that really the focus of this Advent season? And unfortunately, I think in the world we live in, it is because Black Friday, 
right. all the cells, yep. you gotta get this. And if we can build into our kids, our grandkids, kids that come around our family, that Christmas is about hope and expectation in Jesus, the return of Jesus, because we've been promised he's gonna return. Yeah. We don't know when, but that is what we need to focus on. So God is at work all year long, day in and day out, every second of every day. But the season is intended of this preparation, these four weeks leading up to Christmas, of just being more intentional about where your hope is and the excitement and expectation of the return of Jesus. I think that could have easily been our word for the day too, intentional, because that is mm -hmm. what you have to do. It's like we tell people if you're watching from home, you know, you have to lean in. You know, you have to make a little bit of effort to True. lean in, but it's being intentional in this season about, you know, expectation and the hope and sharing that with other people, inviting people to church. Yeah, that's this huge. This is a great time of the season to do that. That is huge. And it's not just only this season, which it's a perfect time because people tend to be a little more open to going to mm -hmm. church, Christmas exactly. Eve service, but being intentional all the time. And I think we're so good about being intentional on our to-do list. And even with the Christmas season, being intentional, I've got to buy for this person, this person, I got to go get this. Oh no, I forgot somebody. And we're running all no, over the place. Happens. It's like, oh no. We forgot, we don't have anything done no. yet for Christmas, so we're way behind. But what if we took all that energy, or at least a good portion of that energy, intentional about reading the scripture, going through the book of Luke, doing the devotional that is uh -huh. launching, uh, that Lindy has put together for the church, yeah. which is going to be absolutely amazing. If we're more intentional about that, those other things just become not as important. But man, we live in a culture that tells us different. I mean, I have Thanksgiving up and Christmas up at the same time. I'm a mess, <laughs> but that should not bother me that my house is a disaster. It's what am I putting my time, my priority, and my intentionality into? And it should be the joy of the season and inviting people to be part of that because what about those people who don't hope in the Lord, who don't have an expectation of expecting the return of Jesus? They don't know. I mean, shame on us. That's our job as not just the church, but as Christians. And we got to realize, too, that this can be a heavy, hard season for people that might be going through grief, remembering a father or a grandfather mm -hmm. or somebody special to them. And so they're in a vulnerable place. And so it's a good time to have conversations about their hope and their expectation. And so... Now, I would encourage you, uh, Pastor Brian, he's doing two yeah. classes this Christmas season about grief sharing and how, mm -hmm. how we process through that. And that's an important part mm -hmm. of who we are as Christians and reaching out to other people. So if you see people that are really struggling, or if you yourself are, contact mm -hmm. the office and, mm -hmm. and let's uh, hook you up with Brian, Pastor Brian. And, and, mm -hmm. Or we can just connect with you and talk yeah, with you as absolutely. well. Yeah, absolutely. And just we just came from delivering something to a group yeah. of women um, going through an addiction yeah. program and awesome. um, trying to overcome that. We just took something to them that was simple, mm -hmm. gathered some people that sponsored some things to do. And oh my gosh, they were, they were tears. There were tears of joy of that hope. And everything we, we gave them was around hope. It was a message of hope we gave them. And I just think to myself how easy that was that we were able to do it. The church, we're going to the gospel mission. Yeah, exactly. Lots of opportunities around this season. You just got to be absolutely aware. intentional. Yes, there that's you go. the word. Yeah. So we encourage you to look at Advent, and I bet a lot of you are in a good place in your spiritual walk. Those that watch this probably are, but step it up. We need to step it up and be super intentional. How's that? There you go. About hope and expectation, not just in what we have and diving into the word and devotion for us, but what are we doing to share that with others this season? So we expect you to have someone at church with you, to send the link, the online link. Maybe you've got a family of friends that don't live in the area and don't have a church they're connected with. Send them the link to join us for this Advent season. We are a blessing that Jeremiah didn't have. We have an ability to put this and connect this over the internet with people mm -hmm. and, and go you know, really viral with stuff. And yet maybe we just sit there and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the sad part, is to do nothing. Jeremiah is telling these, these people that, hey, there is hope. 
Mm -hmm. Christ is coming and mm -hmm. this is going to be an exciting time. Don't lose hope because you look around and see everything that's going wrong. And so we've got a little bit of a question, a challenge for them in this question too. Huh? Yes, our question that we leave you with this week is, are you expecting the Holy Spirit to do something? Hmm. Expecting the Holy Spirit to do something? And Does the that fact happen? that we should expect that every day. We should. But what if we're intentional about expecting that, waking up every morning of Advent, taking this as a season of creating this, this habit, if you will, that of training yourself that I'm hopeful, I'm expecting. And you know, it's got it's gonna take God's word and a community of faith coming together to do that, yeah. to, to to stay committed to having that attitude toward your day. But just imagine what God can do if you're exactly. looking because he's there and he's yeah. at work. Yeah. So we challenge you with that question. We're excited for the Advent season and we hope you will join us in being intentional about how and what we make priorities mm -hmm. this season. Exactly. Have a great week and we will see you next week on TGIF. Bye. Bye.